So good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Olivia. Good to see you back. Same um, here. As we agreed on an email, uh, we have an interview connecting to conference 2019 Budapest Gestalt Conference. And I have a couple of questions. One is, what attracted you forward Gestalt methodology and therapy at the beginning of your professional? Well, I was very young when I was first attracted to Gestalt therapy. Actually, I was 19 years old. I was in my first year of uh, university and my university was in the north of New York State and I was back, I think, for Easter vacation visiting my family. And uh, friends of my father's um, were training with Fritz Perls. That was Frank and Alana Rubenfeld, who were living in New York at the time. And they had organized a professional workshop, a kind of marathon with Fritz Perls uh, in their office down in Greenwich Village in Manhattan. And um, there were people who were allowed to more or less sit in and watch. And uh, my father and I were among them. And this was uh, a huge revelation for me because I was uh, intending to study psychology. I was just at the beginning of my studies. I was interested in psychotherapy. And what I saw there was just flabbergasting for me. I, I couldn't believe it. There were these adults so in touch with their emotions and expressing them and crying and being emotionally overwhelmed and and seeming to to understand something and have insights and it was just almost too much and at the end of this um, workshop I, I thanked Fritz Perls and um, he said to me and I told him that I that I got so much hope from this workshop from watching him work and he said no it's young people like you who give us hope and gave me a big kiss and I was very shocked because I didn't expect a, a man of this age to kiss a girl of my age. And uh, we went with my father's friends and several others, professionals, um, for dinner. And uh, Fritz Perls was with us. We went, I remember, to a steakhouse. And he was an impossible flirt. He was eating off my plate and, and just, he was... A womanizer. Yeah? I was very happy that my father was around, who I usually didn't need to ward off men, but it was <laughs> it was a good feeling to know that there were other adults around there. But I was I was fascinated by Gestalt therapy, and I started to to slowly read about it and become acquainted with it. And I knew then this is the track I want to go. Oh, it was a huge attraction. So was it a real kiss? I'm, I'm afraid it was. Oh, I'm my afraid God. it was. <laughs> and it was years later. <laughs> it was years later that I met Laura Pearls at the suggestion of Ilana Rubenfeld. I was uh, living in Austria at the time with my first husband, who was Austrian. We were in New York for vacation, and uh, I had been in training with her when I was in. Uh, uh, at the New School for Social Research, getting my master's from 73 to 74. I did training with Alana. And she says, why don't you go meet Laura Pearls? She would love to speak German with you. And she trains Gestalt therapists in the summertime when she goes to Europe. She spends every summer there. Give her a call. And, and we did. And she was very uh, hospitable and welcoming. We went to visit her in her apartment and she gave us some reprints of articles she had printed and, and two books in which she had published uh, chapters. And we stayed in contact with her. And then for several years, we invited her in the summertime to conduct a workshop in Austria. Mm -hmm. And she came and we were in good contact with her and I'd visit her when we were in New York and uh, yeah up till she died a few like about a year before she died I wasn't getting any answers when I called or wrote 
And I reconstructed that time later with her daughter, Renata, and realized she was ill and wasn't responding. Yes, it was uh, several years ago that Renata Pearls gave me Laura's uh, notebooks and other unpublished manuscripts and materials and uh, an interview that Daniel Rosenblatt had conducted with her and that which had never been published before in English, although it was conducted in English. And uh, I transcribed all this and annotated it and wrote a long introduction to it. There are hundreds of footnotes also to the interview. And uh, there's a long bibliography of Laura's publications and other publications in, in which uh, she's, she's uh, mentioned and described, her work is described. When I got these notebooks, I was nearly overcome that Renata would entrust them to me. And I, I wondered why she gave them to me. And she said that Laura cared for me very much and she trusted me and she thought they would be in the best hands. And if she didn't give them to me, she didn't know who would be able to, to deal with them in a responsible way. So it was, a, it was an honor. And, and it was also a, a huge responsibility because I needed to, to scan them and, and, uh, and decipher them. They were in, in the terrible handwriting and they were 70 years old, part of them. And the pages would more or less disintegrate under my fingers when I turned them. And I needed, I needed uh, someone who could read uh, the old fashioned German script in order to decipher them. I had to pay an archivist and and a historian to help me go through the books. It was a it was quite a task. It took me two and a half years, and uh, it was also emotionally uh, a kind of upheaval because I reviewed my relationship with her and and got the entire impact of her life, the way she. She had to flee Germany, fled to Amsterdam, went to South Africa, new country, new language, all the difficulties of the war and, and um, losing family and friends, and then leaving South Africa again when apartheid became strong. And they, they went to New York and again, she had to adapt and the children had to adapt and naturally Fritz too and they set up the institute and how how courageous she was and how how she constantly uh, was the keeper of the flame of gestalt therapy for all those decades at the New York Institute it was it was very very impressive and and uh, emotionally touching to to realize that and and to read her her notebooks, which were sometimes uh, like like a diary, sometimes there were letters, sometimes there were manuscripts for lectures, but they were very very personal. Yeah, almost as 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 if I were looking into her her soul. Yeah, looking really right into her. And sometimes I realized how how lonely and desperate she was, and that was that was hard to bear. Well, I'm, I'm very, very, very happy that it's available in English and in German and also French and Spanish. So many colleagues uh, around the world can read it.